Good morning folks it's another beautiful day here in central florida out on the with Lacoochee river we are the day before the full moon and instead of working today i'm gonna try to find some fish we've had two good fronts come through uh here in the last month and a half and the water temperature right now is 71 so not uh, perfect conditions but you know what these fish should start kind of moving a little bit to the shallows with, with this temperature here. Um, at least that's how it was last year for me. So I'm gonna try to find some new spots today and try and pull in some fish. And if I'm lucky enough, maybe I'll have a little bit of riverside lunch. So you guys stay tuned, we'll see what we can get. Goodness, I poopied my pants. Uh oh, Tootski. Need to call these fish in. Wake them up a little bit. Blow the bullhorn, you know what I'm saying? The day before the full moon, so it's possible they uh, ate good last night. So I just got to wait for the day to warm up a bit. They could turn on. But what do I know? I don't know nothing. I'm just out here trying to figure them out like everyone else. Little bass in. I like a mutter at first. He'd be a good eating fish. I'm holding out for specs. I sure hope I get something, or else there just went my meal ticket for lunch. There we go. There we go. First with the coochie speck of the season, boys and girls. Knew I had to pull one somewhere out of this stuff. Well, it's good to see, at least. Not quite keeping size, but I mean, I could keep them, but I'm not gonna. I'm just happy that, uh, you know, got a bite. Nice little pocket back here.
motor then snapped my jig off too so what I'm primarily using today are hair jigs this is just a real basic one emerald head um, this is probably probably uh, deer hair I'm gonna guess but uh, white and green and then a little bit of flash on it red hook 16th ounce jig so um, that's pretty much it the one I had on I think it was green and yellow but these are the last of the Jimbo's jigs I have and then uh, on Monday I have a whole array of colors and feathers and flash I'm gonna start tying my own I'm just getting tired of buying plastics and I always wanted to tie my own jigs it just looks fun always had a lot of cool color ideas that uh, you just can't really find Not too much size to them. But, you know, it's a start. A healthy looking fish. They're certainly not jumping in the boat, but it's good to see that they're warming up to these shallows a bit. I felt someone nipping down there. Yep. Just not much size to them. I mean, I need to make lunch, but good gracious. Gotta get something a little more respectable than that. Little nippy doodah. Nippy lawn stockings down there. A little gale steam. Gill gilly. I mean, even the freaking bluegill in this river are just pitch black. Get that bluegill. Easy. <laughs> He's really trying to flop out of my hand. Look at that bluegill. Pitch black. Crazy. But beautiful fish though. Nice purple, uh, purple gills there. If I were going to be frying fish for lunch, I'd actually keep this fish because it's a uh, good eating size. Bassy freaking suck me under. Bassy. Like I said, I'm still using this hair jig, emerald head with the green and white uh, tail, a little bit of flash in it, red hook, 16th ounce. If you guys ever see me dropping my rod in the water like this regularly, I don't ever worry about it because this floats so i'm not paying attention and it slips off the boat it's not a big deal there we 
Slightly more respectable. I'm gonna throw him in the cooler. That way, have something to eat for lunch. Slightly more respectable. I'm just finding these little tiny pockets and all this water le lettuce, lily pads. Seems to be the stuff they're hanging out in right now. And I freaking forgot to bring my weed puller this morning. Took it off the boat when I went to go get it fixed to Naster. Forgot to put it back on. Not that you absolutely need it, but you know, I'd be pulling holes in some of this stuff. But if you don't have one, you just kind of pick your pockets where there's an opening and do the best you can. Well, pretty slow going, but so it's time for cheer wine. I'm going to continue to keep poking around these pads and all this uh, vegetation. It seems to be what they're in. It's just kind of slim pickings, it seems like. Um, I'm going to scoot around to some different areas here soon, but if I can get a few decent sized fish in the boat, I'll have enough to cook some lunch and it uh, won't be a too bad of a day. The weather's great. You know, I, I mean, it's a little, little breezy, but uh, you know, with the power poles, it's all manageable. So, nice day. Woo wee! Cheerwine, looking for sponsors. Just saying. There hasn't been a single boat out on the river today. I've heard some airboats way further north. But uh, it's been nice and peaceful for a Friday, I'm surprised. The wind is definitely more than they predicted today, as is typical. Sony. It's a nice fish. Looking healthy. Well, I'm getting pretty hungry. So I got a couple fish in the cooler ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and find a spot along the river here. I can set up shop and uh, we'll start making some lunch. 
thinking some black and crappie tacos. That's what I'm thinking. Let's roll. Now this recipe that I'm gonna do, it's on. A, it's not even a recipe. It's just stuff that I had in my kitchen that uh, I figured I could make work for making some tacos. Um, this is gonna be just kind of a home brew. So uh, if you want to try it, go for it. But again, this isn't any kind of special recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fillet my fish. All right. So when it comes to filleting these things, I typically use an electric knife, but. Uh, and I'm only doing a couple here. So, nothing really to this. Now, everyone kind of does this their own way. Um, what I normally do is I take a, a cut right behind the gill here. Kind of cut down and in. And then I come right on top of the uh, dorsal fins here, come all the way down, some guys will skirt the, uh, the rib bone, I kind of just go all the way, all the way through like this. Once you flip, flip over your uh, fillet side here, you kind of just cut down, cut in, and skirt that skin. Got acorns falling on the motor, and then you're left with a fillet. Flip it over, do the same thing. Sorry, I can't get you a little bit closer. Uh, I don't really have a great setup for <laughs> on the boat for filming all this, but uh, all right, come through and uh, cut down. Got your other fillet. Now, this isn't my best filleting job because I'm doing this at a weird angle. I don't have my electric knife, and this one's kind of dull. <laughs> I probably should have sharpened this one. Um, but you know what? It's still enough for lunch. So now the last thing I'm going to do is cut the rib cage out. left with is the uh, actual fillet portion Four spec fillets right there, and again, these weren't the biggest fish, but um, pretty much the best I could get today. Seemed to be a lot of small fish. Now, when I dice onion, I usually will cut it in half, and uh, cut the uh, tail end off of it. And what I'll do is I'll come down and just make. Lits all the way down vertically. So it kind of fans out like that. And you come in on the 
back side horizontally do three layers sometimes four depending on how big the onion is and at this point you just chop down and you got your diced onions This is definitely more than I'm going to need, but like I said, this is just stuff I had in my fridge and at home that just was easy to grab before I came out today. So this is no end-all be-all recipe. This is just thrown together. I also have a, a lime, some butter for the saute, and then a yellow pepper. These are the wraps I'm going to be using. Gyro's Zero Net Carb Keto Wraps. They're smaller, but uh, they're tasty. I like them a lot. And this is the blackening seasoning that I'm going to be using. I like uh, Redfish Magic, um, but I was out of that. And this is what was left in my kitchen. Alas, that's what we'll be using. Spatula. All right, let's see if this grill even still works. Let's pour it out in gas. Hey, boo boo, look at that. Haven't used this thing in, lordy, I don't know, five years, maybe more. Still works. And I'm gonna be doing this with one hand, so bear with me. Three knobs of butter. All right, go ahead and blacken the fish here. Give a, another healthy coat on the other side. And when you put your fish down, you want fleshy side down first, not the skin side. Fleshy side down first. All right. That's pretty good. Just want to make sure the saute pan is nice and hot before you drop in that fish. This is where we're doing our little cookout. Just right in the middle of some some weeds. It's pretty close. Like I said, fleshy side down. Get the little sizzle going. Yeah, getting that little char. That's what we want. And when it comes to knowing when your fish is done, especially with crappie, it's it's pretty cake to look because uh, the edges will start getting more of a kind of a translucent white. You can see the metal there, it's still pretty raw. But uh, yeah, it don't take long. While we're waiting for this to cook, you know what? I'm feeling in a pretty good mood today. And I think I wanna give one of these shirts away. This is uh, an OG original first edition slab long sleeve. I don't have many sizes available still because they went pretty quick, but I think I do have 2XL, XL, some larges, and some mediums. So I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video of how you can possibly win one of these shirts, and I will ship it right out to you. So uh, make sure you look for that, and good luck. So this is starting to look pretty translucent white on this side. So I'm going to give her a flip key. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh 
I'm talking about. Yeah. I'd say we're pretty good. Yeah, you can see how that was just flaking right off there. Do best I can one handed here. Some of you may think I'm crazy doing this on my brand new C deck, but let me tell you something about this C deck. This thing is the biggest pain in the ass to keep clean, especially this light color, this mocha brown. It's already stained in a bunch of places. And I've tried just about every cleaner you can get. None of them seem to work. Okay. So those, that's our fish there. And so all that's really left here is I'm going to slice up that pepper and start putting together my tacos. That looks close enough to what I want. And you can crisp up your, uh, your shells if you want, but I kind of like them doughy. That's just my personal preference. But you do you, boo. You do you. All right, so. Slice this pepper. All right. And I also forgot hot sauce, so I'm just killing it today. Leave my fish down there. Get a couple peppers. Get a pinch of onion here. Got a little raw onion on tacos. And a squeeze of lime. Yeah. And there you have it. Black and crappie taco poor man's edition. Yeah. You know, not having any hot sauce or anything, the lime sets it off. Oh yeah. Let's make another taco. Yeah, maybe one more speck would have been nice. So I can eat a lot of fish. Get my roasted peppers here. Pinch of my onions. really hope this angle is all right because it's <laughs> again my setup is limited on here twist of the lime but ow and there we go another black and crappie taco mm. and I know Everyone's like everyone likes their tacos their own way, but I typically don't eat cheese on tacos. I know that's kind of weird. I mean, I will if I go out to like a Mexican joint. You know, I'll, I'll get cheese on my tacos, but like if I make them at home, I rarely put cheese on them because if you cook with enough good ingredients, you don't really need it. Especially with fish tacos, I feel like cheese on those is just weird. You guys are gonna sit here and watch me smash four of these tacos. That wind is still booking, even this little side canal here. 
peppers, onions, lime. Dude, I could smash like freaking 10 of these things. And someone left me a comment the other day and asked me how I keep my fish from tasting mushy um, after I clean them. Um, and my response, honestly, to that was fresh fish, like this right here, fresh caught, fresh cleaned, um, even blackened like this, I can tell when it hasn't really had a chance to be fully chilled. The meat, it steams mushy and it I guess technically maybe it is mushy but it seems like when it's really fresh like that and it hasn't been chilled it's so flaky that it seems mushy um, but in all actuality spec meat is not mushy at all but when it's as fresh it always kind of tastes like it's mushy but it's just so delicate and so flaky it just falls apart and even in these tacos you can see this it's it's had a chance to cool down so it kind of gets a little more form but especially when it's right hot off the griddle, I mean, it's just falls apart. But I notice when you freeze it um, and then you thaw it out, it seems like the, the form retains better. And I don't know if that's just because it's been frozen, but also if you leave the fish in the cooler for a day, um, which is what I'll typically do. But uh, that's just stuff that I've noticed. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's different for some other people, but uh, yeah, try sticking them on ice for a day, and then clean them, and, and then cook them. Um, or even throw them in the freezer and wait a week, and then thaw them out and cook them that way. But you will notice a difference, I promise you. Alright. I'm going to smash this last fish taco here. This to the coconut. Alright. Bon appetit. Mm. Good eats, man. Good eats. Oh, yeah. That's the way to finish the day of fishing. Make sure I got all the food out of my beard. It's the problem with eating anything with a beard. 30% of what you eat is beard. Anyway, well, that's about it, guys. Uh, hope you had fun watching. Um, this is my first day on the Withlacoochee River where I found specks this season. So that was exciting. I didn't get into them super good, but... Uh, I can, I can tell, as you can see in this video, they're starting to come in just a little bit into the shallows there, up underneath that duckweed. And, uh, you know, just as it cools off more and more, the water temp's only 71 right now. So once it gets back down to like the low 60s, it's going to be on, man. I can't wait. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching. And like I said, I'm going to be giving away one of these slab shirts. And look down in the description for how you can enter to win one of these shirts. And I'll be shipping it out to one lucky person. And uh, make sure you subscribe too because I'm going to be having actually quite a few more giveaways coming up. I got crap I got to give away. So get ready for that. <laughs> anyway, so uh, thank you guys for watching. And be sure to check out other content on the channel because there's plenty of fishing to go around. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.